In this video we will discuss Pascal's Law. Pascal's Law deals with the pressure at a depth in a fluid. So Pascal's Law. So we know from experience that if you go to a great depth and you're a diver or submarine or whatever, the pressure increases the deeper you go. In fact, a very small crack or the slightest poor weld on a submarine at high pressure can cause that to completely crash. So you have to have very good people who weld for submarines and such. And the reason for that is the weight of the fluid above pushing down. This can be found to be that the pressure at a depth is equal to the pressure at the surface plus the density of a fluid in this case water if you're in the ocean, times G times the depth, which is usually written as H, although Y is sometimes used. So this is the depth. This is density of fluid. This is the surface pressure. And this is the pressure at the depth. So y equal h at some depth. Now sometimes because we build what are called gauges, the gauges measure the difference in the pressure from the outside, for instance, the inside. In other words, they measure p minus p naught. So sometimes this equation will be written slightly different. It will be written as delta p is equal to rho g h and this delta P is called the gauge pressure as compared to the absolute pressure and that's simply that it's P minus P naught. Now we're going to drive this using nothing but Newton's laws. So let's see how we get this. Consider some fluid and we're going to make this the surface let's say right there and this is some distance h. At the top there could be a force pushing down. I'll call this F naught. And this force is due to air or whatever else at the surface pushing on it. At the bottom there's going to be some force pushing up from the fluid. I'll call this FB. And in them there's also weight due to this part of the fluid in the white box. The sum of the forces in Y is equal to the mass of this white fluid times the acceleration in Y. But we're dealing in a static condition. And in statics that means this acceleration is zero. So from a free body diagram we have that the force due to the bottom of my little piece of fluid minus the force on top of the fluid minus the weight of the fluid has to equal zero. Now I've made this piece here a rectangular shape. It doesn't have to be but it simplifies the math and enables us to do this without calculus or any of that sort of stuff. So this part here has the size A and likewise the bottom has the size A and this thickness is H. So in calculating that I'm going to need that in here. I'm going to solve for the force on the bottom that's equal to the force on top plus the weight. Now with the weight here I sit there and say, okay, that's the force on the bottom is the force on top, but to calculate the weight I want to write it in terms of things for fluids. And in terms of fluids we talk about the density. So the density and then times the volume. Density times volume gives you mass. And then we multiply mass times G to get weight. However, 
I can relate what the volume is to my little box here. My, it's the area times the height. So FB is equal to F naught plus rho times the area times the height times G. Now I'm going to divide both sides by the area. So I have FB let me pulled up a little bit divided by the area equals the force on the top divided by the area plus rho times h times g but the force on the bottom divided by the area is the pressure at the bottom which we're calling p and the force on top divided by the area is the pressure on the top which we're calling p naught Substituting this in, we have that P is P naught plus rho HG or rho GH, either way you want to write it. So what did we do? Well, we used the definition of density and we used Newton's laws and nothing else. Now this equation is rather interesting. It says that for a given depth, let's say in a container, no matter the shape of the container, for a given depth, say right at this depth, every point in the fluid, there, 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 have the same pressure. every one of these points has the same pressure and furthermore if you make something really bizarre and we change the shape like this let's say the water goes up to here and here it's all filled up with water this height right there sets the pressure not just at one place but for every place across here even for places that don't appear to have as much water this is a very amazing fact and one you probably wouldn't expect to be true but it is all right so the fluids talks we're kind of neglecting how they're talking the atoms between each other but they talk in such a way that they transmit this information through the system. So the only thing you need to know to find the pressure at a depth is to know the pressure at the surface and how deep you want to go. Combine that with the density of the fluid and you know the pressure. Nothing else about the shape of the container or anything is important. Alright, that finishes our discussion of Pascal's Law.